Hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Good. Привет. Привет, как дела? Хорошо. Как у тебя? <laughs> That's all you remember, huh? No, that is really it. I haven't spoken Russian in 10, 10 years. Wow, спасибо. Oh. Remember this? Yes, thank you. That means thank you. На здоровье, на здоровье. Пожалуйста. I'm terrible. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. So to me, Russia was perfect as far as like everything is because I always say like the person I'm most indebted to is Sergei Kushenka. Like I love him for Sergei the Kushenka, rest of respect. <laughs> yes, I love him for the rest of my life. Like uh, he really believed in me when no one else did. Like I was I wasn't a known player. I don't come from a big school. Um, I wasn't, I was playing at Ike. I wasn't at Panathinaikos or Olympiakos. And he took a chance on me and he was like the good greatest. scouting. Good yes. Scouting. Very good scouting. Yep. So yes. I will always feel indebted to him. And from the day one, you know how a lot of people you've been around teams, they come in and say you're family, but you're really not family. It's just sounds no, like so a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just a cool thing to say. Kushinka said that. And he really did that. Like from day one, he was like, you're going to be here. You're going to be here for a long time. I'll give you everything if you give me everything. And that was literally our first conversation. Wow. He's like, if you practice, if you give everything you have on a basketball court, we'll, you'll never leave here. Was his first words wow. to me. And I was like, wow. And you believe him, right? You And I believe him because yeah, you believe why did he have to lie? Like, and he proved it to me. He was like, I'm going to give you a three-year contract to start. And it wasn't like crazy money how it is now. But he was like, I'm letting you know I'm invested in you if you're going to be invested in being here. I've always been quiet. Um, I believe in leading by example. Mm -hmm. um, the, like, I always felt like if I work hard, then you'll follow. But if you don't work hard or you say, let's work hard, but then you if don't. If somebody doesn't work hard, will you tell them like Michael Jordan? Like, <laughs> well, I don't know, Kobe. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't that type of leader, honestly, but I was the type of leader that if you weren't pulling it, I was going to pull you to the side in private. Like I was big on, but I don't you would like tell them in private, but I would. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. like being embarrassed in person. Like you ever, you know how coaches sometimes you make a mistake and they're in front of the fans and now everybody knows you made a mistake. I wasn't that type of leader. I was the type of leader. Like I might be in the locker room and I'll pull you to the side. Like we got to talk, like I'm, what's mm -hmm. going on. Something's not working. Like what do we got to do to make this right? So I was that type of leader. I wasn't a very like vocal in public leader. I would say all of them taught me and brought different things out of me. Um, mm -hmm. I think the one who probably changed me the most would probably be Etre Messina. I think he probably changed me the most as far as I came in with a, a different mi or a mindset that was a little different. Um, like more because, selfish? Um, I wouldn't say selfish. It's, no, not, that. We, it's we, Instagram. We're talking about like simple no, stuff like thinking right. more about I mean your selfish, stats like you have right. to show well, your stats to extend well, no your it wasn't selfish it's just that we had been the three final fours before he got there we didn't mm -hmm. win but we had been so it wasn't selfish with numbers but it was selfish and i knew what i needed to do in order to help us get to a final four mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with stats but coach messina had a different view of how we needed to get there to, in order to be a champion right he's like you've been there but you haven't won so mm. I think we bumped heads because I felt like I don't think we lost because of me. We just didn't win. And hopefully you're coming here with different players like Trajan Langdon and David Vanderpool to make us a better team. So I just felt like at that time we bumped heads because I thought I knew just as much as he did just because mm -hmm. I because had been, been to there. three final yeah. fours. Yeah. Right. So I think he taught me the most about understanding the game, um, sometimes being being patient not always being aggressive offensively, being sometimes more aggressive defensively. But how did, so it, how did that happen? Things. You watched film together or he just like benched you for some mistakes or you just talking to him after games? How the learning process took place? I think the learning process for me and him was this was all of the above. Um, we didn't watch much film together, but as far mm -hmm. as like we did watch film as a team, um, the arguing, like arguments on the court. He told me to go right. I feel like the left was open. Um, oh, wow. Him telling me cool. reads off the pick and roll that 
I didn't look at the roller, but I looked at the guy in the corner and the guy in the opposite corner was open. But Mm -hmm. I felt like this guy in the corner was open. He just missed the shot. But he's like, that's not the right pass. That's the right pass. So I think we butted heads. Right. (laughs) So we butted heads like that. Um, I think that was the thing where I felt like we butted heads. But we, we ended up growing. And I think over time, I think our best relation, I mean, our relationship was at its best during probably one of the worst times of his life. Um, his brother was sick and ended up passing away during one of our seasons. And mm. I think that was the season me and Coach Messina got the closest. I think it was a time where he let his guard down and was a little bit more open with me. And uh, mm-hmm. it was honestly, it was our, probably my best year playing basketball for him. And I just think we, we, we fit and we finally gelled together as coach and point guard. This is the craziest thing. And I, I, I tell this story all the time, but nobody really believes me. Me, my agent, and Mr. Kushinka were sitting at a game, a national team game. Remember when a national team used to be played during the season? I think it was like November and February. Yes, or November like windows. Yes. Yeah, no, November windows. Yeah. So I was just sitting there at the game with my agent and Kushinka. And he was watching the game. And he was like, man, we need a point guard. Would you play with the national team? I was like, yeah. But I didn't know he was serious. He just said it, and we just finished the conversation. He never said another word. One oh, year he later. He had this in his yes, mind, mastermind. No yeah. lie. One <laughs> year later, he calls me like 8 o'clock in the morning like, hey, there's going to be a car downstairs to pick you up to go get your passport. We didn't discuss it. This wasn't a long conversation. We had oh. one conversation watching the game, and then a year later, he came to me. It, that's it. Wow. And you kind <laughs> and of I, like, let's do it. Let's do it. And when he said it, he said there wasn't any pressure to play for the national team. He said, because oh, at that so it time. It wasn't a part of the deal. He, he said it wasn't pressure. He was like, let's talk about it after the season. Because at that time, you had to have three Russians on a basketball court at all the time in the mm-hmm. Russian league. So he was just yeah. saying like, hey, now you'll be considered a Russian. We can go get another foreigner, even for the Euro League. Back then, you can only yeah, have yeah, two yeah. foreigners. Mm-hmm. We can. So it was just. It would just seemed different. It didn't seem like, oh, you're doing this just for the national team. I thought it was also for mm-hmm. Seska. So pro, it wasn't like this team, yeah. big old plot out plan of this is what's going to happen. It just happened. And in um, 2005, I always tell people it was the hardest time for me because the first um, day to practice with the national team, yeah. two of the captains retired. And oh. I never know if they retired because I was playing and maybe playing in some maybe one of their spots or if they really wanted to be done. And that was really hard because I never wanted to play to take somebody's spot. I wanted to be a part of the team, not to remove somebody out of the team. No, it's it's basketball. It happens. Yeah, I don't think it was related. Oh, they got scared. I hope not. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but in 07, when everybody pl- t- came and Coach Black kind of took over, it was what Coach Black did to start it. I have so much respect for Coach Black and Karolinko because Coach Black wow. came in and said, listen, I don't care if you make $100 million or if you make $100,000, we're doing it my way. And if you don't want to be a part of it, don't play. Mm-hmm. And AK, I, I can yeah. honestly say, AK was like, I'm all in. And he never treated any of us like he was here and we were here. And he was there when we were here, but he mm-hmm. never treated anyone like that. And for me, I have so much respect for both of them because without both of them, we don't win for sure. Wow. Wow. So you, um, did you feel any different when you were putting a Russian jersey on or you were like, it's just basketball, let's just play, let's just win. We have the goal, you know, to um, accomplish. I think what people don't understand is anytime you represent a country and not mm-hmm. a club, there's a certain sense of pride. I don't care if you were born there or not. When like, when Mm -hmm. you go out there and you're listening to the Mm -hmm. Russian anthem, you, there's a certain level of pride because this is a country saying, we want you to play and we're supporting you. If you don't feel something in your heart that you don't want to give everything to help them win, I think there's something wrong with you as a person. So for me, I really was like, once you put Russia across me and it wasn't Seska, it was like the whole USA thing was out the window. I'm like, I'm representing Russia. I'm going to give everything I get, I can to help them win and for us to win. You were never criticized from the States? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't care. Like, I always look at it this way. 
if you're in the United States and you're criticizing me, one, you must not have any business in Russia because, or in Europe, because there's a whole bunch of businessmen that go back and forth between the United States for business in Europe. Stop everywhere, every day. Everywhere, right? Yeah. So for me to be criticized for playing basketball, and I look at it as this, in a country that wants me, you didn't want me. So why am I being criticized? You didn't want me to play for your national team or mm -hmm. even in your NBA. So I really didn't care. I, I enjoyed That's it. Good. Yeah, I really love playing for Russia. And the only time it was weird was when we played against the USA and did they try it? Because anthem. I remember USA played uh, against us and Becky Hammond yeah. played for us. Yep. They shut her down. <laughs> Poor girl. Oh my God. She had an amazing tournament for that game. <laughs> I don't think she could touch the ball. They double team her every time. Did they did, do the same to you? They didn't. Um, I had a good game. But what uh -huh. I will say is that it was the first time I was weird because you know, anytime you play in the WNBA, so I'm sure you said hello to almost every girl on the USA team because you kind of yeah, knew. Yeah, you hug them, you right. know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I didn't know anybody and no one said hello. Not one player on the USA team until after the game. Because I played a good game after the game. They were the most nice. They were all pretty nice. I went to uh, lunch with LeBron at California Pizza the day after the game. Like, nice. they were yeah. super cool. But it was like I had to prove that I was good enough. You belong to the top. Yeah, that I belong. Elite but they, I did not one word, not a hello, not a head nod, nothing. So tell me about that lunch. LeBron just texts you like, hey, Russian, come over, join us for lunch. <laughs> no. How did that work? Actually, no. Honestly, he was leaving the hotel. I was leaving the hotel. Yeah. And he looked, he was like, yo, Jay, you want to grab lunch? Just like that. Just weird. Like, literally, so we're cool. both walking out the hotel. He's like, yo, Jay, you want to grab lunch? And we just went over. And at that time, I think Nas had just came out with a hip-hop album. So we talked music. At that time, he wasn't LeBron yet. So he didn't have, have these oh, NBA yeah. championships. Mm -hmm. So we talked about him trying to get a ring. So we literally just, like, had a normal talk because he was a regular person then. He's not LeBron who he is now. He was just... You know, Kobe was still the guy then when mm -hmm. when that back in 08. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 cool. That's special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, tell me about that last final game, the last shot. I know you talked about it a million times. The you know the last two points you scored against Spain. Uh, is this the best your career? I don't know best moment or no. That would be um, the, for me. That would be. No. I think it's it's the best moment because you did something for a country that never had a gold medal. So it's the best moment when it comes to that. But I've, I mean, I told you my first year in Russia was the best moment meeting Kushin because we don't get to there <laughs> without that. Um, there's so many other moments, but on the basketball court, I would say that. I would say I've never been a part of a team where you know something magical is going to happen throughout mm -hmm. like the whole tournament. Like it was just weird. We didn't win. We won zero games in the preseason of that tournament. <gasps> zero. Are you serious? We didn't win one preseason game. And zero. the blood was okay with it? I don't know. I think we were just all just trying to figure each other out. I think it was a time where, like, Coach Blatt was putting our system together. We lost by 40 points in France. Like, 40. It was embarrassing. Like, mm -hmm. we got – but – when I say the team was magical, no one was upset. Victor mm -hmm. Kriyapa, Zahar Pershutin, like the, yeah. Andre Karolinka, all those guys, none of them were rattled. Nobody was like, oh, we're going to be terrible. It was just like, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And when the tournament started, we just knew. Like, you could just tell. Everybody just, it's like something switched. And even when the tournament, I think we lost one game to Spain in mm -hmm. the preliminary rounds. Yeah. When we left the game, I remember Kriyapa saying like, they're not that good. Like he literally said that after the game and they beat us by 20. He was like, they're not that good. So when I say it was something magical about that team and just mm -hmm. that um, Nikita Morganov, he was incredible during that time. Like Nikita, yes. I just think like, yeah. like <laughs> Big I think, guy, big guy. <laughs> yeah, big guy. There's just so many guys yeah. that were unbelievable. I think people just, you if, until you're a part of something that magical, you'll never understand, but it was just a magical team. Um, I think in life, for me, I just want to be always remembered as a good person who had a good heart. Um, I think when you're playing basketball, you mm -hmm. always want to be the guy who everybody's like, he's a great player, he's a great player, he's a great player. When you're done playing basketball, there's people that don't even remember that you played basketball. 
So who mm-hmm. are you as a person and what do people say about you when it has nothing to do with basketball? So I think when I when I wrote that book, I kept thinking like I have a daughter. I didn't have my son at the time, but I had mm-hmm. a daughter and I'm like, she's going to date somebody one day and she's going to get married one day. And if if she if I was to die and she wasn't to spend time with me, how would other people talk to her about me? How would people say mm-hmm. this, was, this is who your dad was? my daughter doesn't remember me playing basketball. So I want her to like, when she says, oh, I love my dad. I want them to say, oh man, your dad was a great guy. He did this, yeah. he did that. So to me, I think my purpose is to try to be a good person and be someone that my my daughter and my son look up to. So for me, I'm, I'm more focused on that now than being a great scout or a great GM or a great di- director. That's it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That was fun. Yes, was it fun. was. I'm so glad that you brought me on. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. And you're such a cool family. Oh, my God. I checked your Instagram. You were like uh-huh. family, person, yeah. family, man. It's so rare to see you. Beautiful yeah. wife, beautiful kids. God bless you guys. Thank okay? you. Stay strong appreciate there. It. I will. <laughs> text, text us when you come to Moscow. <laughs> I definitely will. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah.